Hi friends, my name is Al or Alice Starnard on Instagram and welcome to today's episode of Still Not a Tutorial. Today I'm going to walk you through my gouache process. It's probably going to be vague and really non-specific, but the truth is I have no idea what I'm doing and this is all just guesswork, so let's get into it. For gouache, and in this video, I generally use the Hemi Jelly Gouache, but for things that need to be more professional, higher quality, etc., I use Holbein Gouache. I also always have like a tube of white gouache on hand because you can never have enough white. Seriously, I go through that so quick. <laughs> when working with the jelly gouache, I use a palette knife to scoop out the paint so I'm not contaminating the pots. For brushes, I tend to use a medium and small square brush, a small round brush, and then a really small detail brush. And finally, I use Canson watercolor paper, which I use for literally everything. I pretty much always tape off the borders of paper when working with gouache. I just, I love the nice clean lines with the look of gouache. Obviously I use washi tape for that. Um, for the sketch, I use my regular erasable red pencil. The first sketch can be really messy and loose and poorly erased and all that because for gouache, I generally trace that sketch with a gray pencil afterwards. It cleans up that messy sketch with one solid line so I can see what my piece looks like a lot more clearly and also because the red pencil disappears with that pink layer that I always put down which is the second step. I start pretty much all gouache paintings with a pink underlayer. I do this for a couple reasons. First of all, it's, <laughs> it's just fun. It also helps get rid of that blank canvas anxiety, like that fear and pressure when you start a piece and you realize like, oh my God, I have to cover like all of this. When it's all already covered, it helps you get past that first step, like that mental block. It also reduces the amount of layers that you have to use when painting. Like some of the paints are really thin and transparent and instead of it looking patchy with the white paper showing through, the pink is going to show through which will look more purposeful and like cohesive and cool. It also means you can overall just be lazier and sloppier and work faster because if the pink shows through, again, like it looks purposeful and cool instead of like, oh, you didn't finish the painting. Do you know what I mean? Like, like sometimes I'll literally just like not paint certain areas, but it's like purposeful and it's an artistic choice. <laughs> AKA I'm lazy. So after that pink layer dries, I generally go straight into the focal point of the painting or like the faces, they're usually the same. I used to do multiple layers and like passes at rendering and stuff when doing gouache, but because of this pink layer and just with experience and practice, I'm able to just go straight into the actual rendering and painting most of the time. For the guy on the left, I did do a base layer of his face and then came back to render it later, but that was just because the base color I started with was awful and ugly and I wanted to like let it fully dry and then come back to it. But yeah, like the pink layer genuinely like makes the process go by so much faster. <laughs> oh, and if you're wondering why it's pink, it's just, I like the look of hot pink. It generally goes with everything, especially when you do skin tones. It looks cool. I don't care what color you use. If you want to do that, use whatever color you want, but I like hot pink. <laughs> So I basically just off the bat go into the focal point of the painting, um, intending to fully render it. That usually means mixing a medium skin tone and putting that all over where the skin shows or wherever that tone is relevant. Um, if there's, you know, dark shadow on one side of the face, then I'm not going to put mid-tone there if it's not even needed, but you get what I mean. Um, I tend to go more simple and stylized when doing gouache. Not that it's less realistic, um, but colors tend to be like more blocky and vivid. So I start with this mid-tone wherever it's relevant, and while the paint is still wet, I add new tones to that mixture to create the highlights and shadows. That original mixture of skin tone is just constantly added to to create any new tones I need for the same area, unless it's a color that I need consistently. So for example, like I usually have a mixed black somewhere on the palette that I try not to contaminate. But the skin tone is constantly being changed and mixed into until the skin is fully painted. I try to see the shapes that the shadows and highlights make and paint them as those shapes and lines. Blending gouache, even when it's wet, is really hard and it tends to dry very clearly unblended no matter how blended it looks when wet. So instead, I try to block in those shapes and use very similar colors to subtly make a gradient between them where it's too stark of a contrast. I think the lines and obvious differences between values on the faces creates a really nice authentic and classic vibe. Kind of reminds me of like Norman Rockwell. Um, I really like the look. Plus, trying to make smooth gradients and blending in gouache is so difficult, it's just not worth it. And that technique is basically the, it's the key to my gouache process, honestly. It's how pretty much everything gets done. Start with a general base of the mid-tone or the most abundant color of that area, and while it's still wet, work on adding any other value on top of that base. And then any dramatically different tones or any detail can be added later once that's dry. That, <laughs> that's like, that's literally it, actually. Uh, that's pretty much my entire gouache process. 
we could end the video now and that would be you would have all the information that you need <laughs> Uh, but yeah, break stuff down into simple shapes and a few basic values, mid-tone, one or two darks and a highlight and boom, you're done. You got it. You're good. Um, and keep it all to really basic shapes. It's okay if it's messy, um, you know, no big deal. Like add those nice little details on top to mask how messy it is, which is always my go-to like trick, but it's pretty basic. <laughs> But we'll continue talking about this piece. Once the focal points are done to my satisfaction, I tend to move on to the background so that I can comfortably work on top of that without worrying about like um, covering anything up when I do the background. This time I tried something new that I really liked, which is I did the hair first and then moved around the hair to do the background and I let the pink really show through, which I absolutely love. I'm definitely gonna continue doing that. The way gouache dries on itself is absolutely beautiful and definitely worth exploring, especially if you like texture in your work. Um, just gouache is, gouache is awesome. <laughs> From there, I kind of just work left to right, so I'm not constantly putting my hand in wet paint, which is generally an issue for me. Uh, and since I'm already happy with the focal point of the piece, because I moved on from it, I'm really not too worried about making the rest of the painting particularly good, because if it's too detailed and well done, it'll be distracting. In this piece, you can see the foot of the guy on the left is, it's literally like, it's not even done. It's, there's not even a foot there. Like if you look at it, you don't, there's no foot. <laughs> I'm literally just having fun at this point. I'm really not worried about anything looking good as long as it's not blatantly wrong. Um, I'm playing with colors and lighting. Every time I work with gouache, I learn something new and I use this time to do that. Like in this piece, I learned how to mix a beautiful green that I want to continue to use. I figured out how much pink I like to show through. Um, you know, you're always learning. The shirt of our main guy is actually a really good example of the technique that I use. There's a basic light color that gets a little darker on the side that's in shadow. Then there are two main shades of shadow, a light and a dark shadow. And then we have a really intense dark later to add detail and like to make the clear lines. Uh, and it's super messy, but then I add those green stripes on top and boom, it looks nice. It looks like a nicely, neatly painted shirt, but it's not. <laughs> Once a painting is dry, I usually step back to look at it and see if there's anything that I want to change or adjust. Usually there isn't because since I have a chance to literally make an outline for the piece when I do the sketch, I generally am already happy with the composition and proportions and all that stuff. And if I mess up while painting, I fix it as I go. But I always give myself a chance to decide if I hate it or not <laughs> before I peel the tape. Um, and then I peel the tape and boom, it's done. We're done. I genuinely love gouache. I love the way it looks. I love the finished products that can be made with it. Um, and if you're listening to me talk and you've tried gouache and you're like, she's crazy, gouache is so hard. You know, maybe it's not for you. Maybe it's not for some people. But if you're wondering if you want to try gouache or you got it and you're still not sure about it and you're watching this video trying to figure out how to use it, keep practicing with it. Like just give it some time and you will just like fall into loving gouache because that's what happened to me. I had no idea how to use it. And one day I just painted a piece and the next thing I knew it was my favorite medium. Like it's so, it, I, it does the work for you. I don't know how to explain it. It does half the work for you. Like keep going with gouache. Anyways, speaking of out of my comfort zone, this piece seemed so fun to do. Um, first of all, cowboys, cowboys period. Um, we love cowboys, even though we got some hella whitewashed cowboys here. If anyone has any good book recommendations for historically accurate, like nonfiction cowboy books, LMK. Anyways, um, also this is just a piece where like we have two characters directly interacting. Um, it's a weird composition and also there's a horse, which I don't think I've ever really tried to do a horse before. So this was definitely out of my comfort zone. Um, a little bit, not that much, but like enough. <laughs> it's based off of a Pruitt Carter piece, I think from a pulp novel cover. I couldn't find much information about the piece, um, but the link to the pin on Pinterest is down below if you guys wanna check it out or do the reference yourself. Um, since this is famous art, this also counts as a make it gay. So hell yeah, we got another make it gay in the books. But there we go. There's my gouache process. Again, very vague, but I hope you found it helpful. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please let me know. Like, comment, subscribe, yada yada. Real-time footage from this will be available on Patreon, so check that out in the description. Um, thank you guys for hanging out with me. Let me know if there's anything specific you want to see from me. Uh, yeah, go watch your favorite movie, scrub your toilet, drink some water, and go do some art.